to begin with let us start with the vowels the vowels are called swara in sanskrit now let us go to the basic letters there are three basic letters a e and u first letter is a normally common to many indian languages a the next vowel is a a is a short vowel that is the normal time that is taken to say a is doubled when you say a so a short letter like a is called hraswa short letter a is called dirga or a long letter so next one is e it's a short letter the next set is its partner is e which is a long letter the third base letter in formation of the vowel uh, letters are u right its partner is u which is dirga normal u is hraswa right so there are first six letters which is a e u with short and long form this forms the base of forming other letters right you should know let us observe what happens when you say a when you say a first is the throat getting open yes what is happening to your jaws a it is they are moving apart not wide and normal opening what happens to the tongue tongue sits quietly behind the lower jaw below the i mean uh, behind the teeth and just only the sound gets opened out and thrown right now when you say a ah, there is no difference the long in the long vowel a ah, only you pronounce it or utter it in the twice the time scale right now next comes e when you say e e first your jaws get little bit widen e but your lips won't touch each other when you say e the tongue touches the one third front part of the tongue touches the side part of the cave in the top portion of your mouth that is your upper jaws and you say e the sound will come with the opening of the tip of the tongue between the two points the tongue is touching the upper cave right about roughly one third of your tongue will be touching the upper cave e but not too deep into it e in e there is no difference but you are uttering it at the twice the time scale what is the third one u when you say u your tongue is open u right but what's the best the basic difference is when you say u when you say u your lips gets converged they don't touch each other but they converge and open out a bit now this is the big difference between a and u u means again tongue doesn't have any function so it is sitting quietly at the back of your lower uh, in the lower jaw behind the teeth u is nothing but the long form of short u but twice the time scale kindly note that our article shows uh, the letters in sanskrit tamil and malayalam and a reasonably phonetic english but since we are using uh, baraha normally in phonetic uh, when you say e it will be actually the i sound right now please observe if you don't know sanskrit much try to follow with the english sound and with a book in your vernacular language then there is a very specific vowel sound called r the r gets the sound when you say krishna crystal and things like that or you say rishi so this has to be understood correctly when you say r what happens is r your jaws come closer lips come closer but they don't touch each other but r the touch point is closer to e as when you say e but the air comes e a r the air will come more from both the sides of the tongue to create that effect the long letter for r see r is hraswam or short letter r like you say pitrun that r is the dirgam that is long letter which is pronounced at twice the time scale of the short letter r then the next sound is r this is a combination like you say il l and r r as per what we saw before so when you say l you are front part of the tongue touches the the top of the uh, top row of your teeth and it will open again back like saying r so r r r so please remember 
whatever we record there are limitations to the sound recording sometime therefore if the sound is not clear kindly please uh, look at any other cassettes which are better or please follow your follow up with your guru now for the short letter r il r so r there is a long letter called r which is longer version but a text like pradishakyam does not recognize the long r only it recognizes the short r okay so far we have seen a e u the short and long form then r r then r r now other vowels almost get formed out of the combination of the first three letters that you have seen that's how the we are going to see later now first if you have if you are an indian and using any vernacular language there is a short a that is represented with e it's like saying uh, i can say in telugu i know a little bit you say everu the a is short but in sanskrit only there is a long a it's like saying a mira what is it what is you are asking what right therefore please understand this with your corresponding indian uh, language you may have a short a and a long a but in sanskrit there is only a long a this sound a is produced with a combination of a and e so uh, when you say a and e together i a a the intermediate a sound comes right so in sanskrit the sound that comes with a combination of a is taken to be the long one is supposed to be a combination of a and e now the next letter is i the i is a combination of a and e both long so you say a uh, e then it will i it will create say practice it slowly you will get a sound of an i therefore this a and i these are all formed based on the combination of two basic swaras therefore they are called mishra swaras that means a mix in english language they are called diphthong right i wanted to note a uh, important thing when we use baraka the a is represented through small e and only it is uh, the long e long e is used to represent a in all other indian languages a reader has pointed out this but in our in our article we are going by the phonetic let us always for the purpose of article remember e is equal to small a leave baraka out and a means it's a long e is represented in english as a the next letter is o this is also a mishra swara the o is a combination of a and u right so you say a and u o that effect comes in right but the o has is of long is a long letter and you have to say it for twice the time scale of saying a short letter so o in uh, sanskrit there is no short o in many of the indian languages especially at least a little bit of dravidian languages that we hear we have heard short o but in sanskrit only there is a long o that's a combination of a and u then what's the next letter next letter is au au is also a mishra swara which is a combination of a and u both long so you say au 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 so you get au this is also a long letter consisting of two matras now what is the very important rule that pradishakyam gives which you must all know is when there is a mishra swara say you want to say a which is a combination a which is a combination of a and e the time scale that should be given to a sound is 25% now that is quarter of the value of the letter now you say e you give 75% one third sorry three times the sound value so that when you say a a sound 25% then remaining 75% is the stress of e a when you say a now put it the other way a is two matras so you say the a effect has got 0.5 matras and the e effect has got one and a half matra the same thing holds good for i i is a plus e right therefore a has quarter uh, sorry half a matra the e effect will have one and a half matra totaling to 
two matras. Let's go to O. Same. A half a matra. The O sound effect will be one and a half matra, making it two. So you go to O, A. That sound will be half a matra. The O, long O sound effect will be one and a half matra. So O is two matra. So this is what you should remember very clearly because this becomes very important for extension of a swara over the vowel part. Okay. So what we have seen is that A, I, O and O are Mishra Swaras. Kindly note that when you say E, E at the end, you seem to say Ya, Ya and the E. That effect of E comes. It is Ya with a dot E. Like you say Y. This is hidden. Right. Similarly, when you say O, at the end of it, the effect of U is there. Right. These two you must remember because the effect of Ya and U will come when you learn Sandhi for the letters E and U. So, this is also to be observed very clearly for the use in uh, later for application. Then there are two other special letters. Um, a, you say it is a, uh, having a sound of A and M together. These sounds are called Anuswaram. Like you say Tam, Kam, Ram. So, any vowel sound, it comes with an M that is called an Anuswaram in Sanskrit. The next one is called Visarga or technically called Visarjaniya. That is like saying, ah, ah, this not, it's a A plus H. The H part is what is called the Visargam part. That is, it has got a half when you say, ah, maha, kaha, ihi. So, whatever the vowel sound that we have learned, the Visarjaniya or the Visarga carries half the vowel sound into itself, right? But only the end we will say half fully, but otherwise Rama, Rama. So it is half. But Manabo Amara Prabhu. So it's half. So kindly note this two special vowels that is Anuswaram and Visarjaniya. With this, there will be a total of 16 letters in the normal Sanskrit vowels. There will also be difference when we compare it with Pradishakya, which we'll see later. So we have seen the basic 16 vowel, uh, 16 vowels in the Sanskrit language. So let us uh, continue with the rest in the next video. Okay, thanks.